Hi, I'm Chuck Woolery. Welcome to In Conversation. Now, to my left is President of U.S. Money Reserve and the 35th Director of the United States Mint, Philip Deal. Welcome, Philip. Thank you. And to my far left is Angela Roberts. She is CEO of U.S. Money Reserve. And nice to have you here with us, Angela. Glad to be here. To my right is the 38th Director of the United States Mint and Senior IRA Strategist for U.S. Money Reserve. It's Ed Moy. Yep. Ed, nice to have Good you here. Good to see you. Finally, also to my right and the newest member of our team, Brad Chastain. Uh, he's our Director of Education. He came to us from Vanguard after being with them for over 18 years. So it's been known in the past as the three-prong approach to retirement. Is it extinct? Because the three-prong was Social Security, pensions, and personal savings. And those were the three things you depended on when you went into retirement. And we're asking now, is that extinct? Is it over with? Anybody, take it away. Anybody? Well, I, I just turned 65, so, <laughs> oh. so I'm going through all this right now. And I will tell you what a shocker it is to deal with it today versus what my parents had to work with when, when they retired. So uh, first of all, you know, when you talk about that three-pronged approach, right. uh, I've worked for a couple different companies, uh, short periods of time uh, with each, and uh, the pensions added up from all of them don't add up to much, really? right? Yes, and some companies have because had Because of the short period of time that you worked with them? Or? Part of it's a short period of time, mm -hmm. and uh, people today don't spend 40 years at a single employer, That's true. right? Yeah, that didn't happen yeah. anymore. And then, uh, and then when you look at Social Security, uh, you know, way back then, uh, you, you had confidence in Social Security for a really long time. I think people that are my age now look at Social Security and we go, well, okay, it'll probably be there, but it'll probably be there less than mm -hmm. what they think it's gonna be, right? And so I'm gonna get some haircut uh, off of Social Security. And so I've had to rely on personal savings and what I can do for myself. And so that uh, three-pronged approach is actually a one-pronged <laughs> approach now, of which I'm scrambling to get more stability into my retirement. Yeah, and regarding that on Social Security and stability, it is a revenue system. We take in payroll taxes that go in from workers to pay for those that are drawing Social Security. So as long as that is still being paid, there's some money coming into the system. The issue is how much. Right now, Social Security Administration expects to cut benefits by 20% starting just in nine years, really? in 2032. Now, will they is do that by raising the report? age, or will they do that by literally cutting? Well, that's not up to the, <clears throat> them. That's up to Congress to, to make changes to how the calculations are done or when you get the benefit. But as things stand right now, they estimate a 20% decline at that time. And even right now, it's not enough for most retirees. The average Social Security check last year was about $1,800. That's less than $22,000 a year. Somebody who makes $50,000 a year on average can expect about $1,600 a month there. So when you talk about how much it costs to live, with inflation we talk about so much, it's just simply not enough. So uh, what is their answer to this? There's got to be an answer to it. I mean, it's, it's gotten to the point where you can't address it, you can't think about it. I think most importantly is it's out of our control. Or you can think about we it. We need to take control of yep. our own future and not rely on them to solve it for us. That's yes. what it really all kind of boils down to. You were talking about this yesterday. Yes, I mean, if you of do being the, the calculation, master of your own destiny. Right, calculation. If you do just a small calculation and you say, maybe I, I'm going to spend $6,500 a month in retirement. That's I've kind of lived a kind of frugal life and I've been able to get down to that. Sounds like a lot of money. I don't think it's going to be in 10 mm -hmm. years, but let's say that's what it is. And you've, so you say that yeah, I've got $1,500, maybe $1,600 coming a month. You have a $5,000 delta every month, right? Mm -hmm. You take that times 12 months, $60,000. Take it times 10 years, that's $600,000. You live 30 years on that, you need $1.8 million. And that's if one of you, your husband, your, your wife, whatever, doesn't go in the nursing home. If that happens, you're going to add 10000 a month probably, and that's if you get a cheap nursing home. Um, and then you're still going to have to maintain your household with the other spouse. So now you're looking at a lot more money that you're going to have to save for. Mm -hmm. And those are all unexpected. And, and with dementia and the different things that you know our country's dealing with now, you never know what your family is going to experience. And then wealth preservation for your heirs, right? Because in a nursing home, 
they will deplete all of that um, before you can ever pass that down because you're not going to get any state or federal aid or anything like that, Medicare, until all of those assets are gone. And I think a lot of people don't plan for that. They think, I'm making enough money, I have savings, I have Social Security, which we've all talked about is not really going to put a dent into it. A lot of people like to travel to see their grandkids. That costs money. You know, that's part of a budget that has to be there. So we encourage people to look at their assets, see where their growth opportunities are, um, always to make sure they have a portion of them that kind of hedges against any volatility, such as stocks and bonds and some of the things that we've witnessed recently, and be able to use that to pass down to their heirs. And to, like Brad has talked about it, estate planning is a big thing. Make sure you get with your children, understand when you can start passing money down before you go into a nursing home or a situation like that. So I think the whole way that my grandparents retired is not the way that I'll retire. It's certainly not the way that my kids are. And I think when we're talking about age, whatever what you're referring to is the fact that they encourage you to be 70. They want mm -hmm. you to be over 70 when you retire. And they encourage that by giving you more of your money. Mm -hmm. They'll give you less if you retire at the first possible age. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what you're probably thinking of, and, and that's how they do that. So if you work till you're 70, 72, we'll give you a bigger check. It's not a lot bigger check every month. And so we really make people look at their finances, understand when they think they're going to retire, how many years they think they're going to live, and kind of do that math. It's an easy equation if you sit down with your spouse to kind of go over where you think you're going to be. Have you done that? Calculate. Yes, I have done that. I, I actually I actually did that. Okay. So the love connection was good for you. The love connection <laughs> was good for me, yeah. But I'm probably one of few who do I mean, you know, just I was lucky enough to have good guidance and people who wanted to kind of took me under their wing and showed me how to do that and prepare for the future. I'm still doing that. It's it's a constant uh, interaction, I think, between people who understand where you want to go, how you're going to get there, how much it's going to take. And so it's, it's not just one conversation. Uh, it's, it's constantly moving. And so I'm still talking to financial advisors about that. I talk to you all about that. I get your input on it. So that's... Uh, but on top of that, you are really master of your own destiny. Mm -hmm. You better be because nobody else will unless you are. Yep. So, uh, so, so that's a big lesson as uh, I've hit retirement age. Uh, my philosophy now is, you know, I hope Social Security is still there. And if it is, that's a bonus. Right. I hope my pensions are still there. And if it is, that's a bonus. But the thing that I have control over, because I don't have control over Social Security, right. I don't have control over my pensions, I have control over how I spend my money right. and how I invest that. And that's what, that's my main driver right now. And so do you. So be master of your own destiny too. Thank you. If you would like to learn more about why physical gold should be an important part of your portfolio, simply call to receive the complete guide to buying gold, which will provide you with important, never seen before facts and information you should know about making gold, silver, and platinum purchases. Thanks for watching In Conversation and be sure to visit usmoneyreserve.com. Check out our Knowledge Vault where we keep you informed on subjects that matter to you and your money. So we'll see you next time. I'm Chuck Woolery. Bye-bye, everybody.